Oshkosh Media is. Government programming on GovTV, community programming on Life TV, and community radio on Oshkosh FM 101.9. Welcome to the City Manager's Report. The City Manager's Report, a look at city updates and municipal news. And a preview of the next Oshkosh Common Council meeting agenda. Hello everyone and welcome to another edition of the City Manager's Report. I'm your host John Urban. Uh, we have sitting in for City Manager Mark Roloff this week is Assistant City Manager John Fitzpatrick. John, thanks for being with us today. Thanks for having me, John. Of course, uh, we're going to be talking about some highlights of the upcoming council meeting on uh, Tuesday, October 22nd. That meeting can be seen here live on City Cable 10. We're also going to be talking about some other news and notes of things happening around the city. And we're going to wrap up the program talking with the new finance director, Russ Von Gompel. So we'll be, uh, people can uh, tune in for that. He's going to be talking about the upcoming 2020 preliminary budget. So yes. that should be kind of interesting to hear what he's got uh, to talk about with that. Right. But we're going to start things off, John, talking about some news and notes of things happening here in the Oshkosh community community. People might have noticed, first thing we're going to talk about is uh, motorists going across the Congress Avenue Bridge have to be aware of some closures coming up. Right. There's going to be a full closure coming up on Monday, um, October 21st, and that's going to uh, take place for the entire week, Monday through Friday. It's going to be closed from 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. on those days. So um, we want motorists to be aware of that. So that's a brief uh, maintenance project that the Department of Transportation is going to be undertaking. And then later on um, in, in, the, in the year, actually the beginning of next year, there's going to be an extended closure of that bridge. And that's going to take uh, a quite a bit longer. It could be expected up to six months. But as soon as we get the information from the DOT, We'll be happy to pass it on to the citizens. As you can see on the video, so the bridge will be closed the week of October 21st, and they're actually saying probably through November 1st, uh, Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. So again, watch for signs as you're going over the bridge there. All right. All right, still talking about road construction. We're wrapping up two major projects we were working on this year, uh, Oregon Street as well as Hazel Street. Where are we with those? Right, Oregon Street is uh, going to be complete, hopefully, um, by Monday. We'll see if the weather cooperates with us. Uh, we've been pretty fortunate with some of the things that um, we've been able to do on our construction projects and and uh, I know citizens and the businesses are anxious to have that open. Uh, we'll be talking a little bit about that in regard to some issues that we have uh, undertaken when we get to the council meeting portion of the agenda but um, just suffice it to say for right now hopefully that'll be closed. That'll be opening up on Monday. And then there's also Hazel Street. Um, that's scheduled to be completed November 4th. So again, it's all weather dependent, but you know, we've been pretty lucky so far and hopefully we can get those wrapped up quickly. I'm sure our motorists will be excited to see those two projects wrapped up. All right. Yeah. We also want to remind citizens that the uh, Parks Board meeting originally scheduled for the October 14th has been moved. Right. And um, it, the reason it was moved was because, of course, the Packers were on Monday Night Football on that Monday. And, and I know you're smiling a little bit, and, you know, I have to smile too, especially because they won. But, <laughs> but in addition to that, um, your people may think, well, gee, why are we rescheduling meetings because of the Packer game? Um, the reason we do that is because we want to have full citizen participation. And... Um, we know that there are a fair amount of people here in Oshkosh that are Packer fans, and uh, if we hold meetings, especially during an important game like Monday Night Football, for example, they may choose not to participate, or they may have other plans with their family. So we don't want to inconvenience them, and we want to get their input. So it's just more convenient, I think, for the citizenry for us to reschedule that, and that's why we did it. And on this particular board meeting, the agenda is about the Lakeshore Master Plan. So that's a, that's a big project. It People is have a been big following project. that for, for several, right. several months now. So. so we moved it rather than having it on the 14th, an important meeting like that. We thought it was a good idea to have it on the 21st. So it's going to be October 21st, 6 o'clock, park board meeting. So again, uh, be, please uh, make note of that change. Right. All right, um, it's that time of year. Leaf collection is is uh, something on everyone's mind if you're a, if you're a homeowner. Yes. Um, so that's something that the city does a great job with. And let's talk about how that process works and what people need to be thinking about with leaf pickup. Sure. Um, this, the the uh, 
the streets department does several different uh, passes in people's neighborhoods. Um, but we want to make sure you try to get your leaves out there as quickly as possible, as soon as you can. And um, it's going to be held. It's, they, they go through this process for about five weeks. They keep doing it as long as they possibly can, but we know from experience that usually right around Thanksgiving or maybe a couple weeks before that, um, we could have snow. So once snow takes place, then it's hard for us to, to operate our machinery. It just doesn't work properly. So I, I believe the same, uh, the same rules still apply. Rake your leaves out to the terrace. Don't rake them into the street. Right. Every day, they come the day after your regular garbage day. That's all still yeah. the same. I mean, there's several reasons why we don't want you to rake them into the street. I mean, number one, we don't want any of that. We want to minimize any of the debris going into our, our uh, systems and then ultimately into Lake Winnebago. And then secondly, it's a safety issue too. You know, kids like to play in the leaves and um, sadly, you know, accidents can happen with those leaves in the street and we don't want anything to happen um, when kids are playing in the leaves. So please keep them on your terrace and we'll get to them as soon as we possibly can. All right, now we're gonna move on to a couple of items from the parks area. I understand they're wrapping up the Little Oshkosh replacement. They are, yeah. That, that project is moving along pretty well, too, and uh, we're very excited to open that up to the public again. Um, it's my understanding that they're getting towards the end of the project where they're pouring the, the pad, um, and that pad uh, is something that's a feature in, in all, most of our new um, playgrounds whereby it's accessible to people in, in wheelchairs, um, grandma and grandpas, people that may have disabilities, um, so they can enjoy the, the playground equipment too. And, and it provides a better atmosphere for the families to enjoy it as a, as a group. So we're excited for that to take place, but that can't be poured if the weather is poor. So, and it takes a while for that to, to set up. So I think that needs to be done yet. I think some benches and landscaping need to be done, but we're getting pretty close to completion with that project. Okay, and then coming up this weekend is the ribbon cutting for the Rainbow Memorial Park ball field. That's another exciting parks project. And I think uh, for those people in the community that don't know, um, you know it was really spearheaded by uh, a citizen, Sid Supley, who raised a tremendous amount of money for that ball field. And uh, that ribbon cutting celebration is going to take place this Saturday at noon. I'll be there. Parks Director Maurer will be there. And you know we're going to honor her and, and all the other con contributors that made this project possible. So we're very grateful. I think it's going to be a, another great venue for our citizens. And uh, it should be fun. If you can get out there, I think it would be worth it. OK, and then coming up at the end of the month, uh, the Zuluween Boo, a big event for families uh, around the Halloween time. It just seems to get bigger and bigger every year. I know Jenny does a great job, Jenny McCullion. And um, we have a lot of uh, employees that participate in that project. and. Uh, so it's, it's going to be Saturday and Sunday at Menominee Park, 11 a.m. to 3. And uh, safe trick-or-treat, crafts, bake sale, those are all things that um, we look forward to, too. As you can see, the October 19th and 20th, 11 to 3, Menominee Park Zoo. And you can get the tickets for that, and it's always a great time for the, for the families. Yes. Okay, and then speaking of Halloween, let's remind everyone about the trick-or-treat hours. I know there's... We kind of have it established now of when it is in the city of Oshkosh. There always used to be that confusion, yeah. but now it's kind of a lockdown. It is. It's locked down. It's always on Halloween. So it's October 31st, and the time is 5 to 7 p.m. So okay. people can plan ahead. So keep that in mind. Get ready for the trick-or-treaters. Thursday, October 31st, 5 to 7 p.m. in the city of Oshkosh. Right. All right, that kind of wraps up some of our uh, news and notes of uh, what's happening here in the city, John. Uh, we want to shift gears now and talk about some highlights for the upcoming Tuesday, October 22nd. Oshkosh Common Council meeting live six o'clock on Gov TV. So let's. Um, I understand, John. We're, we're starting off the meeting um, at the at the very top. There's two presentations on possible developments here in the city. Right, and um, just to give citizens a, a heads up on this process, it's something that's that may, they it may be a little bit new to them in terms of how we present projects um, for approval. The council wanted us to adopt a process whereby they have an opportunity to see and hear some of the preliminary dialogue and ideas from developers before it even goes to the plan commission. So it's not any real formal approval process or anything. It's an opportunity for the developers to get in front of the council, talk about their ideas, 
And then the steps after that would be plan commission, some of the traditional steps, and then going forward for potential approval of some of the components of whatever the development may be. Okay, so the first presentation I understand is a uh, proposed apartment building. It is. It's uh, Morgan Crossing. It's phase two. So for people that are familiar with Morgan Crossing 1, it's, it's near the university area. It's um, housing that is not just uh, dedicated to students. And I see we have a picture of it. Uh, I think it, it's, it's been a very popular development. I know that um, it's been, uh, been fully utilized and, and now the, the idea of expanding that, it's going to be a similar project. I think that they're going to be adding a floor on one of the buildings and then also um, providing more buildings um, with underground parking for additional folks. Okay, so that's the first presentation. And then the second presentation, I understand, is to repurpose uh, the former Cabrini School. Yeah, that's, that's a very exciting project. That's something that I know a uh, local developer is involved in. And um, for people that may or may not know where that is, Cabrini School is, lit, is uh, right off of Merritt, right next to Most Blessed Sacrament Church. And um, it's my understanding the developer is working with the church and has, um, since the school is closed, you know, they have an agreement to repurpose that and, and develop it into a housing uh, um, initiative. And so that's, that's pretty exciting. We want to keep the, the historic nature of it, the historic aspects, the beautiful architecture. And we've had several projects like this in the community that have really taken root and I think they've been well received. It kind of preserves our history and kind of renews some of those buildings that are underutilized. So I think um, this will be an exciting project to, to gain more information on. So John, what's next for these projects? Well, after the council just gets the initial presentation and impression, then it's my understanding they secure, they work on securing some of their funding, and then they bring their uh, solidified plans back to the plan commission and then they they look at it and you know ask questions about how it fits with some of our criteria for development and 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 then may request uh, for example TIF funding um, and that's really it's a pretty long protracted process but these are the very initial stages okay we now want to shift gears and talk about some other items on the agenda item number four is to approve amendments to the 2019 operating budget to adjust budget payments uh, for various uh, TIDs, and the acronym is Tax Incremental Districts. Right, and it, it's a good segue. We were just talking about developments and TIFs. And um, so when uh, tax incremental financing is set up for a particular area or a district, um, some projected uh, uh, advancement is, is established, you know, how they anticipate they're going to develop and then what sort of payments they'll receive as a result of that. And um, so in this case, there are four items that need to be adjusted. The payments to these individual TIDs need to be adjusted. Two of them because the developments are doing better than what was anticipated. And those two developments are the Oshkosh Corporation Eco Plant um, that was put in place a few years back. And then uh, the granary redevelopment. I know there was some concern from folks that um, you know, that that has uh, changed hands. But um, in regard to the value of that development, it really has been pretty positive. And I think that was a contributing factor also to um, it not being on the market very long. Mm -hmm. so, so those two are increases. The other ones are just miscellaneous adjustments, the beach building and the Washington building. So although they're not huge dollar items, um, I think we thought it was important for people to know that this is something that happens as part of the process and these elements get adjusted depending upon the, the progress. All right, moving on to item five, uh, award bid to Greensfield Outdoor Fitness for outdoor fitness equipment for the Parks Department. Can you tell us a little bit about what, what park this is going into and, and what this is all, all sure, about? Sure, sure. This is also a project um, in Menominee Park. We talked about that <coughs> earlier. Um, and we're fortunate that we have, gosh, I think it's up to 18 neighborhood associations right now in the city, and they've become, they've become very engaged in all activities of the city. But in, in regard to this outdoor fitness equipment, 
I know the Neighborhood Association, uh, the Menominee South Neighborhood Association, was very engaged because we are part of the um, update to Little Oshkosh and the construction project on Hazel includes a trail that's right along the roadway there. And they thought it would be uh, pretty cool if they could uh, establish some exercise equipment there for folks to utilize. I understand these are some pictures of the, of the kinds of yeah. samples of equipment that are going to be put in. Yeah, we really don't have a venue like this in the city where people can utilize a trail and then also use this kind of equipment. So I think it's something that'll be a, a nice addition That's neat. to the park. Okay, moving on to uh, some items under new ordinances on the council meeting. Uh, or uh, Number 17 is, uh, looks like it's some proposed uh, traffic changes to the intersection of West 11th and Minnesota Street. What can you tell us about what's changing here? Well, actually, um, this was uh, the item that we just touched on earlier in regard to construction in that Oregon Street area. And um, we had the school district contact us and said that, you know, because of some of the construction, there was just an extra amount of congestion that was taking place around the school and asked us what we could do. So this is just a temporary measure to try to alleviate some of the congestion around the school in that area. So that's something that um, I think will be welcomed. Okay. Uh, still under new ordinances, number 18 is the item. This looks like several parking updates, and one of the items is related to the recent closure of Smith School on Oregon, I understand. Right. This is really more cleanup in regard to parking restrictions. Um, there were some loading zones by Smith School, and now that Smith School is no longer going to be active, there's no reason to have that parking, uh, those parking restrictions there. The other ones are just miscellaneous sight line improvements. All right, well, those are some of the updates we wanted to share with the, uh, the folks about the upcoming Tuesday, October 22nd, Oshkosh Common Council meeting. That meeting can be seen here live on uh, GovTV. What we're going to do is take a short break here on the city manager's report. When we return, we'll be talking with new finance director Russ Van Gompel. So stay tuned. We'll be back with more of the city manager's report right after this. Over the years, the Oshkosh Public Museum's most popular programs have shared the life and death stories of residents laid to rest in local cemeteries. Some of these tales have even recounted the ghostly activity of those restless souls rumored to still remain among us. Cemetery Tales, the exhibition, features local mourning and funeral history, while artifacts, photographs, interactive displays, and other ghastly surprises breathe life into these local legends. Cemetery Tales, the exhibition at the Oshkosh Public Museum through October 31st. My name is Tori Heideman. I'm the crime analyst at the Oshkosh Police Department. I'm here today to talk to you about our new app called Relay. You can download Relay free on the App Store um, on your cell phone. And what you can do is report any non-emergency situation or tip to us via the app. Um, you can either just report it as something that you would type or you can take a picture as well and send that over. It'll go right to our officer's MDC screens and you'll be in touch with uh, an officer from the the Oshkosh Police Department directly and they will let you know if they follow up on the tip, if they start a call in our computer systems and where that has went from your tip. Todd's a great guy. I mean, look at him. What a sweetheart. Atta boy. Wait, Todd, what are you doing? How totally selfish and untod like of you. Come on, Todd. Come on, man. And welcome back to the City Manager's Report. Sitting in for City Manager Mark Roloff is John Fitzpatrick, the Assistant City Manager. And in just a minute, we're going to be talking with the new Finance Director, which John will introduce. But we do want to talk about the budget. That's a busy time of the year for us here at the City as we prepare for the budget process. And right now, we're looking, of course, at the 2020 budget. And just to, for everyone to be aware, the budget workshops are coming up. Uh, they'll be live on GovTV 
on October 28th and 29th. It'll be all day, 8 to 4.30. So you can tune in and watch the budgets for all the city budgets as we go through that. So something to keep in mind for folks, October 28th and 29th on GovTV. You can see that 8 to 4.30. So what we're going to do now with the rest of the time we have in today's program, though, John, is we're going to be talking with the new finance director, Russ. And so I'm going to turn it over to you to introduce our new finance director. Sure. Thank you, John. Yeah, we're very happy to not only have Russ here today, but in our organization. We're very fortunate. Um, Russ joined us, I don't know, Russ, about a month ago, maybe? A couple months ago. A couple yeah. months ago. Yeah. Seems longer. <laughs> so I've known Russ for a little while. and. Um, he has a wealth of experience that we're really uh, grateful to be able to utilize here in the city of Oshkosh. I know he most his most recent assignment was the city manager job in Eau Claire, but yeah. maybe you can just tell uh, the citizens a little bit more about yourself and your background, Russ. Sure, I was uh, born and raised in Little Shoot, Wisconsin, so and went to school at UW Oshkosh, so I know the community quite well. Um, and uh, took my career down to uh, Brown Deer uh, for a number of years, about 15 years, and became the city manager in Eau Claire. Eau Claire and Oshkosh have a lot of similarities. Uh, university community, uh, about the same size, right. a lot of the same services. So um, uh, when the city needed some help in the finance area, you know, I started out on the interim basis and then came on board full time and, and enjoying it. And one of the joys at this time of the year is putting together the budget. <laughs> That's right, exactly. <laughs> and just as a prop, if nothing else, we've got a sample here of, of what, what the budget is. And maybe you can just kind of give us a recap, Russell. What, what, walk us through the process of the budget and what, what are you looking to do the whole time? Sure. Um, you know, the, the budget process is a planning document on how we're going to provide services for the upcoming year. We actually start in June, July timeframe, work with the departments, come together with what they think they need to run uh, their organization, their departments for the upcoming year. Um, so we put that together. A lot of work goes into play to, to, to look at how we can make that all fit. Because not only do we have the request for funding, you know, how are we going to actually come up with the money? And uh, that impacts the residents. So uh, part of that process is to present the preliminary budget, which has gone to city council. Um, then we'll have the public hearing on uh, November 6th at 5 o'clock. Uh, so that the public has a chance to weigh in. Part of a, a good uh, budget is actually having the input from the community as part of that process. Absolutely, and I, and I think, uh, you know, Russ described it beautifully, John. I think the only thing I would add is it's really the second part of uh, a process that really starts with our strategic plan. You know, there's the strategic planning and then there's strategic management, and those plans can't get executed without the adoption of a budget and the commitment of resources. And I think the council has done an excellent job um, planning and then executing and accomplishing a lot of the stuff that we've planned. And it's, it's really helped kind of focus our budgeting process too a little bit more. And I know that that's gonna be a, uh, a feature of the budget as we go forward. I know you're working on kind of modifying that document a little bit, Russ. You want to just talk briefly about that? Sure. One of the key components is, you know, how are we doing? And, and uh, we've included inside the budget our key performance indicators. So, you know, how, how are the departments providing the service and, and, and what kind of service levels we are, we're providing? So that's an important part. Um, yeah, absolutely. In, in addition to that, you know, how we're performing is, you know, how are you going to come up with the resources that pay for that? And uh, quite honestly, in Wisconsin, Oshkosh, Eau Claire, or other similar communities are all really relying on the property tax levy to help support uh, the funding of our operations. Right. Can I just ask then, so based on what we have in front of us as of today, what would the impact be for the homeowners here in, in the city of Oshkosh as, as the way the budget is right now? Yeah, again, we're working with a preliminary document. Uh, we'll receive the input from residents at the public hearing, but we'll also have the, those council uh, workshops, all-day workshops on the 28th and 29th of October. So these could change, but right now we're looking at the, the biggest impact is how does that levy then get allocated across um, the assessments. And you look at the community for the total assessments, and the levy, quite naturally, most of the levy goes to our operations, which it in government, it's called the general fund. And in Oshkosh, we have a lot of our levy going to debt service. Um, we have about 31% of our levy going towards debt service, and the rest gets allocated to some of the other functions. But uh, our general fund um, really takes up most of that levy, about 
uh, 48% of the levy goes to the general fund. And for 2018, right now, we're projecting an increase of 4.2% um, in the general fund portion. Uh, but, you know, again, we're kind of looking at how we can, you know, hold the line as best we can and still pay for those functions. Right. I know uh, we had some recent discussions about where we're at with our reserve and um, how we're doing on, uh, you know, accomplishing the, the targets that the council set. And I think, you know, based on what I've heard from you, Russ, we're doing pretty well. Yeah, the city's doing real well. And we're looking at projections for our fund balance through the end of 2019. And that'll allow us an, on uh, potential uses of that fund balance, maybe for larger one-time expenditures. You don't really want to use those accumulated reserves for operations. You really want to have a sustainable revenue structure going forward. Agreed. I think you said it very well. And I know that, you know, Russ mentioned uh, there was some debt service there. And, and we want to try to maybe apply some of these things that we can take care of on a one-time basis so we don't need to, to borrow for those things. And I think that's going to be a focus for us and our organization as we move forward. Yeah, and, and in addition to our, our operating budget, we also have our capital improvement plan, uh, which again is looking at long range some of those major funding uh, projects that are out there. But from an operational standpoint, you know, we talked about tax levy support. We also get some aid from the state of Wisconsin, but unfortunately that's been kind of frozen. So, you know, the amount of money available from what used to be called shared revenue and other sources is really dwindling down. But you can see in our general fund, which again is most of our operations, really comes from the levy. Um, we have about 35% uh, coming from intergovernmental revenue sources, and then the remaining 24% from charges and fees and those type of things. But the public is also sensitive to what we're charging for fees and, and other charges. So it's kind of a balancing act. Absolutely. No, I know it is a balancing act, and I know we hear very clearly from the citizens about not only the tax rate, but also the fees. And that's why it's important for us to report on how we're doing so the citizens know what they're getting for their money. Exactly. Their investment. Exactly. And, and then the other question is, where does that general fund money go? Um, so, you know, most of our expenditures are on public safety side of things. Almost 60% is going to public safety. Uh, public works is another 14%, another 13% to uh, general government, and then some other things like community development, transportation, and parks. So it's a balanced budget, so that's always good from an accounting standpoint, so things are looking good there. But the big message is, you know, where do we go from here? You know, actually the final adoption of the budget will occur on November 12th, and once that's done, then we kind of do um, the spread, the, the tax levy, uh, and get the tax bills ready that Unfortunately, it comes out early December, and uh, that's everybody's favorite time of year when the, when the taxes right. get so, out. Right. So the to point. really recap with the few, minute, few seconds we have left here, the budget workshops are coming up on October 28th and 29th, live at, on, uh, at, from 8 to 4.30, so two days where people can watch everything going on there with the budget workshops for all the departments. Then we're going to have the preliminary hearing on November 6th at 5 o'clock. Yes. And then the final adoption on November 12th. Correct. All right, and so that wraps up the whole process. There. And that's pretty common with most communities. All right. Well, Russ, thank you again for coming on the show. No problem. Thank you, John, Russ. John, thanks for sitting in for Mark. Thanks for having me, John. So, again, we're t we've been talking about the upcoming Common Council meeting coming up on Tuesday, October 22nd at 6 o'clock. You can watch it here on GovTV. Certainly tune in. You can also watch the uh, listen to it, uh, see it on our website, oshkoshmedia.org. You can listen to it on 101.9 Oshkosh FM, which is also online on our TuneIn radio app. Make sure to like Oshkosh Media on Facebook and follow us on Twitter for all your community and government programming updates. Thanks again for watching this edition of the City Manager's Report. We'll see you next time. Good night. Over the years, the Oshkosh Public Museum's most popular programs have shared the life and death stories of residents laid to rest in local cemeteries. 
Some of these tales have even recounted the ghostly activity of those restless souls rumored to still remain among us. Cemetery Tales, the exhibition, features local mourning and funeral history, while artifacts, photographs, interactive displays, and other ghastly surprises breathe life into these local legends. Cemetery Tales, the exhibition, at the Oshkosh Public Museum through October 31st.